Yeah.
Great with a glass of milk. Packing an Operation Christmas Child shoebox. Okay, what's well,
let's be honest. Packing an Operation Christmas Child shoebox can go great with anything. It's so that other kids can learn about Jesus. Praise the Lord! Oh, and it's also a great way to teach your own kids about giving. Teach your kids about giving! giving. Have a great day! Oh, and don't forget, make good choices. So, basically, you get an empty box, which any box will work. Really? Okay, not any box. Much better. Okay, so now you have your empty box. Now you can pick the age range, and if you want it before a boy or a girl. Okay, come on. Please be a boy. Please be a boy? Well... Looks like we're going to be packing for a boy this year. First, you can choose a wow item, such as a soccer ball. Or a stuffed animal. Mm. And you can choose other fun toys, too. Hygiene items. And school supplies. There are, of course, some items you cannot pack. Like big ones. Food. Items related to war, live animals, and don't even think about packing chocolate because it melts! When you get this finished, you can write a letter and include a photo. It gives it a nice personal touch. When your box is done, you can make your $7 shipping donation online to follow your box. Simply print off your tracking label to see where the destination of your gift will be. And don't forget, it's important to pray for the child that is receiving this gift. Because packing a box is a simple way to share the gospel with kids all around the world. Maybe even in... Mid... In Africa. Now that your box is done, it's time to get moving. Transport your box to a nearby drop-off location near you. These will be open all across the U.S. on National Collection Week, the third week in November. Drop it off and voila, you pack the shoebox. If you guys want to, see. all of that and remember this you need it all to fit in the box so a soccer ball is not going to fit in this so well if you want to let the air out but they may not have a pump when they when you get it to them put a pump with it okay but don't blow you can if it don't fit in here it won't work so anyway right here it says how to pack your shoe box we got the boxes right back there and like i said last week if you know how to put together a chicken lid you can put these together a lot of people said, what? No, nobody knows what a chicken lid is, so y'all didn't raise chickens when you was growing up. So it says how to pack your shoebox, pick a girl or a boy. And one thing, don't forget, it's almost like packing a, like you would a, a stocking. So remember, when you're packing it, you're packing it for a kid. You get to pick out the age. You can pick out um, uh, 2 to 4, 5 to 9, or 10 to 14. And so you buy the gifts according to what you decide that you're going to put in your box. And then don't forget, he said $7, but this year it's $9. A donation is for shipping. And it's critical that you cover your shipping. So you can either, if you, if you know how to do it, you can print the label off, because this has got to have a label on it. And then you can print the label off on your um, computer, and you can also do the donation online. Or Miss Brooke will print some labels off here, and if you'll just tell us what age, you know, you might want to just stick a note in here when you drop it back off here that it's for a girl or a boy or what age it is, and then make sure if you don't pay online that you put your $9 in the box, and then we'll put a shipping label on it. So is that clear as mud? Hallelujah. All right, so don't forget to put your $9 in there and, and think about what age you're, you know, building your box for and that it's like a... A stocking, like you would stop stuff, put a stocking stuffer. So, all right, make sure it's really fun. And would you want to get it if you were little or big or whatever? Amen? <laughs> all right, are y'all ready to give this morning? Yeah. Praise the Lord.
But before we do that, you can go ahead and get an offering envelope off the back of the chair in front of you. We want to recognize you, if, if you're a first-time visitor at DCF, we're really glad you chose to visit us this morning. And there's also this card in the chair seat in front of you, and it says, Welcome to Decatur Christian Fellowship. And, uh, and it, uh, we just, it just gives us some information about you. We'll send you a letter. We'll put you on a mailing list. And not only that, if you'll take it to the bookstore on your way out, which is the last door on the left before you go outside, then um, Miss Karen or whoever is in the bookstore will give you a gift. But you've got to take this back to them and give it to them. And we have a bag of goodies that we want to give to you. So fill that out for us, if you will. We'll put you on a mailing list. And we're really glad to have you with us this morning. So amen. While y'all are filling out your envelopes, let me give you a good reason to give. The Bible says in John 10 and verse 10, the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but jesus is talking here he said but i have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly and i saw this in um one of my bibles that word abundantly means super abundance excessive overflowing surplus over and above more than enough profuse extraordinary over the ordinary more than sufficient that's what that word abundant means so that's what God, that's the kind of life God wants to give to his children. And so, but, but remember this, that if you're going to get what God's got, you're going to have to get in the kingdom, amen? The Bible says to seek first the kingdom. That's God's way of being and doing right. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek God's kingdom first above everything else. And then God's able to pour back into your life abundantly, super, over the ordinary, more than sufficient. I mean, you can't outgive God. He is a more than enough God. Amen? So go ahead, guys, and receive the offering. And, and uh, let me remind you all that we are having a baptism today. So if you're going to be baptized, make sure that by the end of the before the end of the service that you're dressed in whatever you're going to be baptized in, Make sure you got a towel. We used to have some, but they just one by one disappeared. We may have some, I don't know, we may have one or two, but hope you have a towel and um, then um, a change of clothes. So make sure you're ready to be baptized as soon as service is over. So around 12, make sure you're ready to be baptized. And, um, and then um, also don't forget next week, is, I'm sure we're going to do announcements, but, but these are just things I want to bring to your attention. Next week is the fall family picnic from 4 to 7, so don't forget that. And uh, we got some more to say about that. So praise the Lord. Let me pray. Father, we thank you that you are a good, a mighty, and awesome Father. We thank you, Father, that there is nothing too big for you. There is nothing too small for you. That, Father, you care about every big and every little thing in our lives. That, Father, we can go to you with, with any, any, uh, anything that's bothering us, any obstacle that's standing in our way. And, Father, you'll work with us to move those things out of the way, Father, that we may live this abundant life, this good life, Father, that you've, you have made available to your children. And so, Father, we thank you this morning that because we're in the kingdom of God, we can trust you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs and raises and bonuses and promotions and gifts in the mail and favorable settlements. We thank you, Father, that, that we can trust you, Father, to meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning for the people who are here, for the ones who have given into this offering, Father, those who've given online. Father, we thank you for blessing them back again, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And, Lord, we praise you for the anointing in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, y'all, it's so good to talk to y'all this morning. We just want to give you a call and remind you about your shoe boxes. Wait, let me pick one up here. here see, your shoe box. Don't forget to fill it up and bring it back. Oh, Pastor, I think you have something yeah, to say. Give me some. Hey, and I trust that you all had a great time last Sunday, you made new friends, had a great lunch together. Don't forget, uh, church doesn't stop at 12. 
Invite somebody to lunch today. Make a new friend. Be a friend. Hey, Bless you. I just wanted to remind you, we've got baptism coming up. Hey there. we got baptism coming up right after service today. Immediately following service, we've got baptism. That's going to happen. And also on... Fall picnic. That's right. Coming up on the 27th of October from 4 to what? 7. What are we going to do? We're going to have a... Hey Rod. Nice, it's gonna Games. be fun. Games. Hey Ride, right. fun stuff. That's right. Be there. All right. Who's got Hey, time? wait, 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 wait. Don't forget to tell them. <laughs> Don't forget to bring your desserts, cakes, pies, candies, anything homemade for the cakewalk. And that's it. Have fun. Wait, I got something too. But we're also doing the baby dedication on November 4th. So if you have a sweet little baby, bring them. Oh yeah, we don't want to say bye! <laughs> I'm looking for Miss Sheila. She's so excited about that festival and she's still trying to throw food on me like she did last week, remember? Hey guys, y'all wanna make some cool Yes! Yeah. Look, I got a dollar that you gotta do something for me. So come here, man. I'll give you a dollar, and you a dollar, and all you gotta do is throw that in your mother's face. Can you do it? Hey guys, just a couple quick tips about the festival on October the 31st. So you wanna be here before seven because we're gonna start right at seven o'clock. So make sure that you bring a change of clothes and wear old clothes that you can get dirty. And also you probably wanna bring a towel. So it's kind of like double dare. There's gonna be Bible trivia and physical challenges and one big really messy obstacle course at the end. All the people on the winning team are gonna get a free trip to Upsurge here in Decatur. Hey mom, are we gonna have this stuff at the festival? Let me see. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> you tricked me. You tricked me. This was worth it. Your praise will 
ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my
every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every praise we could ever breathe. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Live for you. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Live for you. Sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we worship you. We magnify you in this place. Thank you, Father. You are good. You're merciful and you're mighty. We magnify your holy name. Father, I pray that you would be glorified in all that we say and all that we do this morning. Father, may nothing that we do bring dishonor or shame to the kingdom of God. But Father, may everything, Lord, be geared toward you, Father, exalting you, exalting your holiness, exalting your omnipotent power. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Magnify you, Father from the very depths of our heart, expecting, Father, to receive from you this morning, but, Father, most of all, that you may receive from us. Lord, we pray that you've been pleased with our ministering to you this morning. Now, Father, minister to this people. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, if you haven't greeted your neighbor yet, Go ahead and greet them. Praise the Lord. Shake hands with them. Find out who they are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we need to pray. We've got one prayer request we really need to pray about this morning. <clears throat> and that's uh, Mike Morgan. He, uh, you know, he comes to the church. Uh, Reagan's ste stepdad. And so uh, they've been coming to church for a long, long time. But anyway, he's in a hospital, and they really don't know what's wrong with him. And... Uh, they really running tests, trying to find out what's wrong with him. So y'all just agree with us, amen, that, uh, that he's going to be okay, okay? So, Lord, we, we come before you as a church family. We pray for Brother Mike. Lord, we lift him before you, Father. And we pray, Father, that whatever has been wrong with him is wrong with him no more. <laughs> amen. Father, we believe right now, Father, that you can turn a bad situation into a good situation. Lord, you can turn that circumstance, Lord, uh, to our advantage, to, to Brother Mike's advantage. And so, Father, we call him healed this morning in the name of Jesus. And we don't care if they ever find out what it is because we know it's not there anymore. Lord, we thank you for it. We curse it and command it to go from him now in Jesus' name. And all that agrees with that says, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, we prayed for uh, Jimmy Harmon. He was in the hospital, had colon cancer. Y'all remember that? Well, they say he's not got it anymore. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Glory to God. And so God answers prayer. <laughs> Praise the Lord forevermore. Well, I trust you brought, brought your Bible with you. Hallelujah. We're going to have some good stuff to share with you this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the good word of God. We thank you for the word, Father, that you've placed in this book called the Bible. But, Father, we thank you, Lord, for placing this, these, the words of this book into our hearts. And so, Lord, we worship you. We magnify you. And believe, Father, that you will confirm your word this morning with signs and wonders following. You said, Father, that if we would preach the gospel, Lord, you would confirm that word. So, Father, we pray that you would stretch forth your hand to heal, grant signs and wonders to be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. Father, that every person here may know and believe, Father, Lord, that this is not a fairy tale. This is not a story that someone has made up, but it's the God's honest truth. It is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. We praise you that you are a supernatural God. And, Lord, we thank you, sir, that when our natural needs the super put on it, Lord, you'll bring us the supernatural. And so, Lord, we thank you that this morning, the supernatural manifestation of the power of the living God will be seen in this place. We release our faith, Father. We believe you for miracles today, Father, to take place. Lord, we thank you for the anointing upon me, Father, to deliver your word. And, Lord, we thank you for it. 
We believe that it's done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Turn with me in your Bibles, <clears throat> excuse me, if you will, to the book of Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. But I'm going to read quite a few verses here. Because <clears throat> I think it's important to see the whole gist of what I'm, what I'm about to share with you this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> in Acts chapter 12, in verse 1, the Bible says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And, beside, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Uh, then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of uh, soldiers, excuse me, <laughs> uh, to keep him intending after Passover to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church uh, of God for him. And when Herod uh, would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And uh, the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a, light, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, uh, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said, saith unto him, Cast thy garment uh, about thee, and follow me. And he went and followed him, and he wist not that it was the true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision, or a night vision, or a dream. When they were uh, past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own, of his own accord. And they went out and <clears throat> passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Praise the Lord. And so uh, as I read this, I'm, years ago I remember reading this and uh, saw where that, you know, up here earlier where it said that, that uh, they'd killed John, you know, uh, in, in verse 2, and, it's, and it said that Herod uh, killed James, rather, the, uh, the brother of John, with a sword. So uh, the angel killed James, but the angel delivered Peter, as we read as we read the story there. You know, I don't know about you, but uh, you know, the, I know that the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. Acts chapter ten, verse thirty-four, that God is no respecter of persons. And and so I read this, and I thought to myself, you know, years ago, I mean, when I, I saw this revelation years ago, that I thought, how in the world? How in the world that, you know, why did the angel deliver Peter but didn't deliver James? How, how come that happened? How come, how come James was killed and Peter, was, his life was spared? You know, so, so I began to look upon that. And, uh, you know, and I can only come, uh, you know, I'll, I'll touch on why James was killed in just a moment. But, but I want to look at how, how, how Peter was spared. Amen. James was killed. I, I want to know how to be spared, don't you? I, I mean, I, I don't want to be killed with a sword. But uh, so I looked at this, and I, and I could see that, well, Peter was a man of faith. And you can't please God without faith. Without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to please God. So, so we know that Peter pleased God because he was a man of faith, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. But you say, well, Brother John, did, wasn't James a man of faith? I believe he was. But, but, but we're going to look at some things this morning. Why he wasn't totally delivered. Why, why he was, maybe, that, not, not for sure, but maybe that's why he wasn't delivered. But we do know that, that Peter was faith, and he was in faith in this situation. Because, look, it says that in, in verse 6, And when Herod would have brought him forth, talking about Peter, the same night Peter was sleeping. Everybody say, Peter was sleeping. Now he's sleeping and, you know, I mean, they've already pronounced the death sentence upon him and so they're going to kill him, you know, just in the, in the next day or two. But the Bible says he's sleeping. Praise the Lord. But, but going down now, going down, he's sleeping. 
And uh, when all this takes place, an angel came, well, comes and wakes him up and gets him out of there. Uh, but, but it says here, uh, on down here, it says in, in verse 12, and uh, well, let's go back up. Uh, let's go back up to uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, in verse, verse 6, we'll read that again. And, and when Herod uh, would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between the two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So, I mean, it, it was locked tight. It, it was locked tight. But while he was sleeping, in verse 12 it says, And when he had considered the things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of, Je the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Where many were gathered together praying. So they were praying, the church was praying, and Peter was sleeping. So that lets me know one thing, amen, that he's probably in faith, don't you think? If, if, he, if, he, was, uh, if he was sleeping and, and the church was praying, and Peter, a lot of people think, well, that's why he was delivered, because of... Uh, because that uh, the church was praying. Now, we, you know, we, we pray all the time, you know, for people. We prayed for people this morning that, uh, you know, for people to be healed here that's not, not here today. And we think, our, our mind thinks if we got more people praying for us, then our odds of getting healed or delivered or whatever, that could be the case. That uh, That's why we get answers to our prayer if we've got a whole lot of people praying. But the, the, the magnitude of the, of the people, that doesn't affect your praying. Amen. Whether one's praying or ten's praying or fifty's praying or a thousand's praying. Amen. That, that, that doesn't move God by how many people are praying. Are you listening to me now? Now there's instances in the church or in, the, in our city from time to time there'll be somebody prominent that's dying or got cancer or something and the whole city, every church in the town's praying for that person because they're prominent, of prominence, everybody knows them. You know, they may be a politician or, uh, or some, something like that or so involved in the community some way. And so, uh, so everybody be praying for them, uh, but they still go ahead and end up dying M most of the time. Most of the like 99% of the time. Isn't that right? There's more people that die than get delivered. Is that right? Come on now, help me out. Is that right? Sure it is. You know, you know as well as I do, if anybody gets healed, it's usually an exception and not the rule. Yeah. Amen. So, so the number of people praying doesn't impress God. The number of people praying, you know, really doesn't get God's attention. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Amen. But, but what does get God's attention? Amen. God is not a respecter of persons. We know that. Acts 10 verse 34, God is not a respecter of persons. That means that Whatever you do to get an answer from God, if I do that same thing, I get the same results. And if I don't get the same results, then God is a respecter of persons. But we know that God is no respecter of persons. I mean, so if I can find out what you did to get your deliverance, if I'll do that same thing, then I'll get my deliverance. And you can bank on it every time. Every time you can bank on it. You can rest assured that you can bank on that. And so here it says that Peter was sleeping while the whole church was praying. The whole church was praying and making lots, lots of prayer for him day and night. Praise the Lord. Uh, it says uh, in, in, in verse 12 again, And when they had considered this thing, that they came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to and, and hearken, came to hearken unto uh, uh, came to hearken, uh, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told Peter stood that Peter stood at the gate. She's so excited, you know, Peter said, Hey, y'all let me in. She didn't even open the door. I mean, she runs to where they're praying. And then in verse 15, it says, And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. <laughs> All right, so, 
So now they're praying. Rhoda comes and tells them, hey, hey, he's at the door. He's at the gate. They said, woman, you're mad. Amen. That's probably his angel or spirit or something like that. Well, we, that lets me know immediately they wasn't in faith. So the people praying at John Mark's house, they, they weren't in faith. They weren't expecting to receive an answer. They, they really were not expecting to receive an answer. But when the answer shows up, you know, they think, you're crazy. You're crazy. This woman's crazy. She's mad. So, so that lets me know, that lets me know that, that, she, uh, that, that Peter was in faith. Peter was in faith. And so that's the only thing that moves the hand of God is the hand of faith. Amen. The hand of, we've got to believe Him. We've got to trust Him. The hand of faith. And you know, I know I, I teach quite a bit on the subject of faith. But this is what I find out most people need. It's how to develop their faith. How to, how to hook in with the blessing and the promises of God. And so if we're praying, I want people that agree with me that can pray in faith. Amen. You know, and, uh, you know if, if I'm real sick or if I'm under attack... I don't want people of doubt and unbelief praying for me. Because they're going to have you in the grave, you know, before tomorrow. Or if something goes wrong with you, and you tell somebody, it spreads. Hey, did you hear about old Susie? You know, she got cancer. Oh, did, you hear, did, you hear about, did you hear about this? You know, uh, and, and then they jump on the bat. And well, yeah, yeah, my mother died of that same thing. Or, you know, stop talking about that. So, so I, I don't know, this is just the way I am. I mean, if there's anything ever wrong with me, nobody's going to know it except me and God. Many times I don't even tell Sheila. Amen? But if it, if it gets to the point where I need somebody to help me pray, then I'm going to gather people together that I know that can be in faith, that can pray with me in faith and believe God with me and not feel sorry for me, not pity me. Amen? But know how to pray in faith for me. Because there are times in your life you need people gathered around you that know how to pray. Amen. You don't need a bunch of doubt and unbelief when you're fighting a battle. Amen. You're, you got enough of that on your own without somebody in com coming along and giving you their share of it. Amen. So we, we, need, we need people that know how to pray. Amen. And so, <clears throat> you know, we teach on, on prayer from time to time, but still I'm amazed a lot of people don't know how to pray. You know, you know Jesus said, Jesus said in John chapter, where is it? John, John chapter 15, John chapter <clears throat> 16 there, he says, in the day of the new covenant, in that day you shall ask me nothing. But whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it you. Amen? So He'll give it you. So, so whatever we ask the Father in Jesus' name, the Bible says He'll give it to you. He says, in that day, in that day you'll ask me nothing. He said, don't ask me anything. So we don't pray to Jesus. But in Jesus God, yes, He's God incarnated in the flesh. But He's the one that said this. He's the one that said this. He said, pray. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name... He will give it you. So we ask the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. And He gives it to us. Praise the Lord. So a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll pray around circles and they'll say, in thy name. Or, you know, you hear people say that. In thy name. You know, and, and you never mention the name of Jesus. But we're to pray in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus gives us an audience with the Father. Amen. G the name of Jesus puts us in the presence of Almighty God. Praise God. So, and I know that's uh, elementary to a lot of you, but some of you don't know it, and I know people on the Internet that may be watching us don't know that as well. But we, I wanted to know why the angel delivered Peter and didn't deliver, didn't deliver Thomas, I mean uh, James. Yes. I mean, why, 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 didn't, why didn't he deliver James right there in the same chapter? The angel, the angel spared Peter, but he didn't spare James. And James was the pastor of the church. In Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And so wh why did these things take place? Well, one, one, one theory of this is, amen, because we don't have a real solid answer, but there's got to be a reason. And there, there, there's got to be a reason. All right, in, in uh, Hebrews, if you will, tell me in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and I, I believe this, uh, this is what, this, this helped me anyway. In James chapter 11, uh, the Word of God tells us there, in James chapter 11, uh, let's, let's begin reading with, uh, this is the Hall of Fame of, of, of faith there, why 
Some were delivered and some were not. In verse 34, it said, Some quenched the violence of fire. Chapter 11, verse 34. Quench the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in flight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, listen to this, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Amen? So, so here's a possibility. Amen? That James didn't accept deliverance. Amen? In order to have a better resurrection. Now, now you say, well, I don't understand that, Brother John. Well, I'm going to put it to you this way. Go with me, go with me, to, uh, go with me to, to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 21, I think that it is. Acts chapter 21. All right, in Acts, Acts, chapter, uh, ch- Acts chapter 21, it says here, uh, and let's begin reading with verse 8. And the next day, we, we that were of Paul's company departed and came into Caesarea. And he entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the, uh, the seven. Now this is not Philip the Apostle, but one of the, uh, the Evangelists, which was one of the seven. And abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So that he had four girls in his family, and they prophesied. Turn to your neighbor and say, who said women can't preach? All right? All right, so, so let's go on. Listen to what I'm saying. And then in verse 10, verse 10, And as he tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he had come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him unto the hands of the Gentiles. And when he had heard these things, both we and they of the place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Amen? But, but listen what, what Paul says here in, in verse 13. And when Paul, then Paul answered, What mean you to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not only to, to, be, bound, to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so he says, I'm not, I'm not only willing to go there, but I'm willing to die. Look at chapter 20, chapter 20 and verse 23. It says, uh, we'll go back to verse 22. And now behold, I go, Paul speaking here. Now I go, I, I go uh, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city, saying uh, that, uh, that bonds and affliction abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I may finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the, of the grace of God. So can you, can you see that? Uh, it says that, uh, Paul, now get, now get the picture here, Paul is down at, at, at Philip's house, the evangelist. You know, he's got four daughters there that prophesy. But here comes a prophet named Agabus, and he says, takes Paul's girdle and says, whoever owns this girdle, you know, if you go down to Jerusalem, it's going to be bound. You're going to be held prisoner. You, you know, bad things are going to happen to you. But Paul said, this happened wherever I go. Wherever I'm going, people are telling me the same thing. Amen, that bonds and affliction wait me. But he says, I'm not only willing to go there, but I was also willing to die. All right, so what's that got to do with James and Peter? Amen. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this, I, and I, I feel this same way. I feel this same way. I want to be around as long as I can. I want to be around as long as I'm of use. Amen. But, but if my death will cause, you know, if my death, now i got to word this right where you understand what I'm saying. If, if my death, like a martyrdom, now that's the only death that a child of God has a say-so in about being a martyr. I mean, that's dying for the gospel's sake. Not dying of cancer, not dying of something else. Are you listening to me? So, so uh, you know, it's like God telling Paul, now Paul, I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to preach there. I want you to preach there, but this is what's going to happen. It's going to be rough. Amen. 
And you, you, you know, they're, they're going to bind you up. They're going to afflict you. And, and I believe that he knew that he would even be slain eventually. But Paul died as a martyr in Rome, and he didn't die of cancer. He didn't die of, of heart disease. He died as a martyr. So, so he said, you know, and I, I really believe the Lord says this. He said, it's your choice, Peter. I mean, Paul, it's your choice. You can, you, you can go to Jerusalem or you can do something else. But my perfect will, I need you in Jerusalem. I need you in Jerusalem. There's some things that I need you to accomplish. Amen. But this will cost you your life. Are you willing to do this for me? Amen. And I, I believe, well, I know. Paul said, not, I'm, not, I'm not only willing to go there, but I'm willing to die. Yeah. Amen. I'm willing to die. And, and so this is what makes the difference. Amen. This is what makes the difference. Paul had a choice. God gave Paul a choice. Go and die. Do what I say, dude. Be in my perfect will. Or stay here and we'll just let... If, I believe if Paul had done that, we might not even heard of Paul. We, we might, he might have had somebody else. God would have raised somebody else up. No, but I believe that's why God chose Paul because he knew Paul would do whatever he said do. And I'm going to tell you, child of God, don't you ever say, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do if you don't mean it. If you don't mean it, don't, don't you ever say that. Amen, unless you really mean it. Because he may be telling you to do something pretty difficult. I was a young businessman on my way home from work one night. And I was praying to, to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I'll do anything you want me to do. I promise, I'll, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Yeah. Then he said, how about preaching, John? I want you to preach the gospel. <laughs> oh, no, no, Lord, not that. That's not what I meant. I didn't want to do this. I didn't pick this as a vocation. God called me to do this. But I surrendered. I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, after, my good, after a good cry, amen. <laughs> You know, and I knew I was snared with the, the, the words of my mouth. I said, Lord, I'll, I'll do it. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And I, 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 I mean that. That's why I am where I am today. That's why I'm in Decatur, Alabama. God sent me to Decatur. I didn't choose Decatur. God sent me to Decatur. Somebody didn't get come and get me and hire me to be a pastor in Decatur. Amen. God sent me to Decatur. Yes. Amen. I'm here because... God sent me here, and I'll be here if He tells me to do something else. But I, but, but I told God that I'll do everything, anything that He wanted me to do. Amen. I, I was uh, in my last year of Bible college, and missionaries from the Philippines came. And they were recruiting people from our Bible uh, class, uh, from, from our, our class, from our pastoral class, and uh, to get to go to the Philippines... They were going to go build a church, a physical building, but they, need, they wanted to deposit a pastor there. Put a pastor there and then go to another island, build a church, put a pastor there. And I thought, praise God, I'll do that. Lord, that's, I'll go to the Philippines, I'll go to wherever you want me to go. So on the way home from school that day, I, the Lord spoke to me and said, John, I don't want you to go to the Philippines. I don't want you, I want, I've called you to pastor a church right here. I mean, he didn't tell me where, he just said in the United States. He said, you'll pastor a church here and the people you pastor, some of them will go, but you won't. Amen. And now we don't have anybody particularly in, in the Philippines, but we have got missionaries from this church in other countries of the world. Amen. Because I came to Decatur, Alabama. Amen. Did what God said do. And, and so we've got to do what God tells us to do. Amen. Whatever, and and it, it, if you tell the Lord, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Amen. Be ready. Be ready. Because if everybody could do it, it would already have been done. So he, I don't know. It seems like God, when He tells me to do something, it's always hard. Well, give me some easy stuff. I want some easy stuff. Give me something that's easy. Well, if it's easy, everybody would do it. See, no, nobody's really... Willing, willing to be discomforted. Amen. They like the comfort of, of our home. We, we, we got it all planned out, don't we? Amen. We, 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 you know, we live, in, in most of us, I'd say all of us, live in pretty nice homes. Well, Brother John, I just live in a shack. Well, it's better than a lot of people. Amen. I, I was ministering in Mexico, in the southern part of Mexico one time, 
And we went to this village. That's 100,000 people lived in this village. Amen. And all they were was cement rooms. That's all they were. They had us to go and pray for this, this woman. And there was a, go into this cement building about, you had to duck your head to get in there. And get in there. And in the corner of the building, corner of the room, there was a mattress. And on that mattress lay a sick woman. Amen. They had a little table over here with a candle on it. And that was about it. In that, and then they had a public bathroom that everybody used in that village. Amen. And a water fountain just where everybody drank out of the same water fountain. Just a little bit of a trickle of water. Amen. So honey, don't complain because of what you got here. But we got it pretty good, don't we? And, and because we got it pretty good, a lot of times we don't want it messed up. We got it all planned out. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to work to a certain age and then I'm going to retire and then I'm going to travel and I'm going to do this I'm going to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Unless God tells you to do something else. Amen. Moses wasn't even called until he was 80 years old. Amen. Mo Moses, he wasn't even called into the ministry until he was 80. Amen. And when he, when he was 80, that's when his ministry started. Amen. So, so don't think. You know, th thank God. You know, we got, we got it all planned out. Amen. I do too, just like you do. Amen. But that's subject to change. That's subject to change. And so there may be an angel some night tap you on the, on the shoulder. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I got an assignment for you. Are you willing to go? Are you willing to do something? And it may not be nothing but, hey, I wake up, wake up, I got an assignment for you to do. I want you to work in the church, in the nursery. The church nursery. You mean God will wait and send an angel, wake me up to do it? Absolutely. <laughs> See, we always think, no, God's going to send me to Africa, some place like that. And He might do that. But why would He send you to Africa when you won't even work in the nursery? Come on, did I say that? I'm going to say that again. Why would God send you to Africa when you won't even work in the church? In the nursery. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I'm, I'm willing to do whatever God tells me to do. I can change diapers. Amen. And I can preach the gospel. I'd rather preach the gospel, but I can change diapers. I do know how to do that. I act like I don't sometimes where I don't have to. Amen. But I, I have done that before. And I can do it again. Amen. So, so all of us, amen, when we tell the Lord, Lord, I'll do anything that you want me to do, amen, it might mean giving your life for the gospel. Giving your life for the gospel's sake. But see, we don't like to be disturbed. We don't like to be embarrassed. We don't like to go places where we're not welcome. We don't like to do those things. But somebody's got to do them. Somebody's got to do them. And sometimes it costs people their lives. But you know what? The Bible says there in, in, in uh, Acts chapter, or Hebrews chapter 11, it said a lot of these people chose death over life that they may obtain a better resurrection. What is that better resurrection? I don't know. But I do know that there's different rewards in heaven. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Read it sometime when you got a chance. There's different rewards in heaven. We all are not in the same pay line. Amen. Amen. we got <clears throat> different rewards. And some rewards are greater than others. Amen. So if they were martyred in order to obtain a better resurrection, praise the Lord. Amen. It's, it, it must be worth something. Amen. Or they wouldn't have died for it. Amen. They wouldn't have died for it. So what, what is the better res resurrection? Like I said, I don't know. I don't know, but, uh, but praise the Lord, it's worth dying for. Amen. It's worth dying for. And, and so, so when we tell the Lord, I'm willing to do anything, Lord, and so did Peter say that? Did James say that? I believe James said that. James said that, and, uh, and he was martyred as a result of that. Maybe Peter said that too, and, but he was martyred as well. Eventually, he was, he was martyred as well. But... Notice that none of the apostles died of cancer. None of them died of heart disease. None of them died of a sickness. They tried to kill John the bad, or, or John the, uh, the the apostle, the apostle John. 
John the Revelator. <laughs> Amen. They tried to kill him, and they put him in a pot of boiling water, oil, boiling oil, and that, could, that didn't kill him. Did all these other things, that, that didn't kill him. They went, went through many different things. They tried to kill him. They couldn't kill him. The rest of them, they crucified or chopped them in two or something like that. But they couldn't kill old John. <laughs> Amen. And, I, and I, I believe this is one thing, because he was a lover. He walked in love. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, he, he, knew what, he knew that God was love. He, 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 was, he was a lover of men. He was a lover of God. Praise the Lord. It cost him a lot of heartaches, a lot of trials. He suffered a lot of things. But I believe he has a better resurrection too. Amen. So I, I'm looking for that better resurrection. I want that when my job is done on this, this earth, when I've accomplished everything that God wants me to accomplish, he says, he'll say, well done, good and faithful child. Come on home. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. What a, what a home going that will be. Amen. So, so why does God choose to deliver some and doesn't deliver others? Well, the only, only thing that I can tell is that uh, the person's faith, where that person's faith is, where, where that faith is. Uh, you know, uh, Paul, Paul had it rough too. And, uh, you know, wherever he went, he stirred up trouble. And that was the thorn in the flesh in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The thorn in the flesh there, it's not a sickness. The Bible says it's a messenger of Satan. And God didn't send that thing. God didn't send the thing, the messenger, uh, that, that thorn in the flesh to humble Paul. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says it was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet Paul for the abundance of the revelation that he had. God gave him the revelation. Then he said, but just to keep you humble, I'm going to give you all this revelation, but I'm going to keep you humble. I'm going to slap you upside the head a few times and give you all this disease. That's not, that's not what the Bible says. The, the, the Bible says it was people. The thorn in the flesh was people. Wherever Paul went, what happened? Trouble. Yes. Hey, Amen. Trouble. Where, wherever Paul went, there was somebody causing him trouble. Yes. He could do great miracles and had all kinds of signs and wonders. and had big crowds. Yes. But somebody wouldn't like it, the religious people. Yes. So they came and, you know, you know, and stir up trouble and beat Paul to death nearly. And so one time they did beat him to death. Yes. And was caught up into the third heaven. So sometimes, you know, the, all these things would happen. But the Bible says the thorn in the flesh was a messenger of Satan, not a messenger of God. And so God doesn't like for us to have the revelation. So the more revelation that you get, the bigger target you become. Oh, Brother John, I don't want any more revelation then. Well, you sissy you. Amen. Then we'll have a greater reward than you do when we get to heaven. Amen. So, so uh, there's... Great revelation. With great revelation, brings great persecution. I mean, look, look at all the men and women of God that have gone before us that were mighty warriors for God. Man, they were persecuted. Still persecuted to this day, even though they're dead. Books are written about them. All kind of lies are told about them. Amen. When I went to school out in Tulsa, you know, at Old Roberts University, there, uh, there was a uh, the praying hands out front of, of Old Roberts University. Big bronze hands praying just like this. If you ever go to Tulsa, they're still there. Amen. But anyway, so I was working with a guy at nighttime. I was going to school in the day, worked at night. He said, you know, they tell me, this is the guy telling me, this old heathen that I was trying to get saved. He said, they tell me if you go that, those bronze hands and wave a quarter over those hands, they'll open up just like that. <laughs> because, see, they criticize old Roberts for raising money all the time. Amen. Some of y'all get that after a while. But they criticized Brother Roberts for, for uh, raising money. But, you know, you walk on old Roberts campus. Amen. Every one of those buildings are paid for. Amen. They're, you know, every, everything's paid for. It was when he was alive, anyway. And, and, but, but, you know, it takes money to operate the gospel, to preach the gospel. Amen. And so they, they were listening to the wrong voice anyway. You know, dear God, don't ever mention money or sex or politics in church. You know, if you do one of those things, you're really going to get persecuted. Amen. Isn't it, isn't it amazing you have to walk on eggshells around election time because you might offend somebody? That's a bunch of hogwash. Amen. Open your eyes. Open your Bible. 
Amen. Don't listen to what they say on television. Amen. But anyway, I'll get to meddling. I'll get to meddling if I don't shut up. Amen. But everybody knows my stand. I'm a Christian and I vote according to my Christian values. Amen. Not because of some political party. But John, what political party do you belong to? I'm of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I belong to that party. Amen. We, we have a Holy Ghost party every Sunday, don't we? Praise the Lord. So why does God deliver some and God doesn't deliver? It seems as those others don't. Well, maybe it's a lack of faith on one. Amen. Maybe it's a, they chose that. We don't know. We can't judge. And so I don't want you judging either. Amen. But God's got a plan for our life. And I boldly say before, before you, before the angels of heaven, and before God Almighty Himself, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I will do it. I will do it. The Lord told me to give up this church, pack my bags and go somewhere, do it all over again. I don't want to, but I would. I, I'm, I'm willing to go. Are you? Are you willing to do whatever God tells you to do? Amen. So that, that's all God wants you to do. Just do whatever He says to do. You do it. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place. I pray that they're all born again. I pray that they're all saved. I pray, Father, that when they die, they'll go to heaven. But, Father, per adventure, there may be some here today that's lost or backslidden out of the will of God. They don't know you. They've never known you as a, their personal Lord and Savior. They've heard you preached about. They've heard Bible stories about you. Bible stories have been told them but they've never had an encounter with you. They've never surrendered their life to you. They've never asked you to come into their heart and live in them. Father, I, those are the ones that I pray for this morning. I pray, Father, that you would touch them, that you would minister to them. You would open their eyes. You would open their understanding, Father. Lord, we bind the devil that would try to harass them, that would blind their eyes and deafen their ears. We bind those foul spirits in the name of Jesus. And now, Father, while their hearts are clear and their minds are, are, their minds are clear and their hearts are receptive, I pray, Father, that you would speak to them this morning loud and clear and let them know where they stand with you. Let them know that there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Father, I pray, Lord, speak to them. Don't let anybody in this room this morning, anybody watching us on the Internet, don't let anybody that's viewing us in any way go to hell, Father. But Lord, I claim them for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed and no one looking, everyone in an attitude of prayer. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, that's me you've been praying for. I'm lost. I'm backslidden. I'm out of the will of God. I need to get things right with God. Pastor, would you please pray for me? I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm not going to call you forward. I'm not going to draw attention to you in any way. But I need to know how to pray for you. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, no one looking. If you're the one that God is dealing with, would you lift up your hand right where you are and let me pray with you? Is there anybody in the house this morning that would say, yes, Pastor, that's me. I'm lost. I'm backslidden. I'm out of the will of God. Pray for me, Pastor. Anybody? Anybody? All right, I don't see any hands raised. Amen. Uh, so I'm going to ask you one other thing. You may be here today and you say, Pastor, I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I know I'm a child of God. And I'll do anything God wants me to do. But Pastor, I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Pastor, would you pray for me this morning? If that's you, then you raise your hand. You say, yes, Pastor, that's me. I'm born again. I love God. I've got the Spirit on the inside of me, but I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. If that's you, raise your hand. Anybody in the house? All right. Then I take it that you're all born again. You're all baptized in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Let's wait on the Spirit just a moment. Thank you, Father. 
Rabo Shikeleba. Thank you, Father. Yes. And the Spirit of the Lord would say unto this congregation, in this moment, in this hour, in this time, and in this day, there is coming the time that you will have to make a decision. Am I going to do what God told me to do? Or am I going to do what my flesh wants to do? But the time is now, says the Lord. As you take those bold steps of faith, I'll meet you where you are. And I'll lead you in this path. And I'll guide you and I'll take care of you. For in that perfect will of God will come the perfect life, will become the perfect happiness, will become the perfect peace is in that place of obedience. So have I not told you in my word, says the Spirit of God, hallelujah, that if you be willing and obedient, you'd eat the good of the land? That promise is still so. That promise is still alive. That promise is still real. If you'll be obedient, you will eat the good of the land, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Magnify you. Thank you, Father. Some of you here today, it's the little things. You just need to make a commitment. I'm going to attend church regularly. Some of you just need to do the little things, like volunteering to work and to help in the church. Some of you just need to commit to a daily prayer life, just to pray every day for the things that the Spirit of God tells you to pray about. Some of you just need to make that commitment. Some of you just need to make that step of faith to do what God tells you to do. Hallelujah. He's not going to send you to Africa until you're ready. He's not going to send you to Haiti, amen, or some other poverty-stricken place. Amen. He's not going to send you somewhere like that until He's got you prepared. But you start that preparation by doing the little things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Father, we thank You and we praise You and magnify You. And Father, if there be anybody in this place this morning that's sick in their bodies and they need to be healed, you said, Father, if we lay hands on the sick, they'd recover. So, Lord, we're going to do that. We're going to lay hands on sick people and we expect sick people to recover. No longer shall they be sick. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you're here this morning and you've got sickness in your body, you like to be healed, you like hands laid upon you for healing, then you stand to your feet if you can. If you can, you can just raise your hand. But anybody in the house this morning, you need prayer, there's sickness in your body. Anybody? Praise the Lord. No hands have gone up. Isn't that good? <laughs> That's the way it ought to be. That's the way it ought to be. There ought not be any sick among us. But if there is, we know what to do. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right, Brother Ben, uh, so let me turn that light on. Pastor Ben, I'm going to turn this over to you. We got some folks to baptize, I think. Give me the microphone. Hold this and don't drop it in the water.
Hallelujah. Is there anybody else? I thought there were several signed up. All right. There's uh, more than one baptism. The Bible talks about several different baptisms in the, in the Word of God. There's the baptism of the disciples. He said, going all the world and preach the gospel, you know, baptizing them, the, the disciples. Amen. So we baptized the disciples. That's what we did here this morning. Amen. But, but then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You know, in, uh, they, in uh, Acts chapter 14, there it says that, that in Acts chapter 14, it says that well, as they were preaching, uh, the church at Ephesus didn't even know that there was a Holy Ghost. Have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? They said, we didn't even know that there was a Holy Ghost. So there's the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. But the Bible says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And one baptism that it's talking about is the baptism into Jesus. You've been baptized into Jesus. Amen. So that's what happened when you were born again. You were baptized into Jesus. And that's the one that counts. Amen. All of them count, but that's the one that gets you to heaven. Amen. Not baptized in water. This is baptizing the disciples. The discipleship baptism. That means that we're following Jesus' example. Not only in our death, burial, and resurrection, but in our entire life. Amen. The, the baptism of disciples... That's exactly it. Said, I'm a disciple of the Lord. I'm going to follow Him. All the, the word disciple means follower of Christ. So I'm going to follow Him all the days of my life. That water baptism doesn't get anybody saved. It's the baptism into Jesus that gets people saved. Amen? So praise the Lord. So there's different kinds of baptism mentioned in the Word of God. Amen? So is that all? All right, I'm going to ask my prayer team to come. Let's all stand on our feet. Ask my uh, prayer team to come at this time. Hallelujah. And yeah, I want you to invite somebody to lunch today. Don't get out of here. Go or stand around out front, you know, waiting for somebody to invite you. You invite somebody. Well, Brother John, I don't have any money. Well, let's just go to the house and eat a piece of cornbread or something. <laughs> do something, amen. You can do something. Praise the Lord. All right, but if you need prayer about anything, as I dismiss everybody, you come and let us pray. Praise the Lord. The rest of you, you're dismissed. Go rejoice. And we love you. See you next time. See you Tuesday. Remember, the Hagans are going to be over at Cornerstone Church in Madison this week, uh, Monday and Tuesday of this week. So if you want to go over there. And tonight. And tonight.